I never make mistakes in HVAC. If somebody tells you that, I guarantee you that they're lying. Unless, of course, it's their first day on the job, they just started their HVAC career, and they simply haven't had time yet to make their first blunder. All the technicians that I know made at least a few big blunders in their career, and some of them made epic mistakes that cost a lot of money. So with this video, I thought I would do something different and just make it a story time, a fun video. I really don't have an agenda. I'm not trying to teach you anything or show you how to repair something. I just want to talk stories. I know that there will be some HVAC technicians watching this video, and I'm confident that you'll have some blunder stories of your own. And even if you're not in the heating and air conditioning field and you're in plumbing or carpentry or some other trade instead, I'm sure you have some great stories of your own that you could share. I would love to hear those stories in the comments. And of course, it wouldn't be fair for me to ask that of you without sharing a blunder of my own. So I will share a blunder that I don't think I've ever shared on this channel before. Let me tell you my story that happened long ago on my first HVAC job, my first year. All I was doing back then when I just started is furnace and air conditioner inspections because I wasn't very good at troubleshooting and diagnosing yet. This happened during the winter season when I was doing furnace inspections all day. When I started out, Somebody taught me to check gas pressures with the furnace on, and they told me this was okay. So that's what I did. And what I mean by that is that I would actually hook up the manometer while the furnace is already on and the burners are lit. Especially if this is a two-stage furnace, I would fire it up and it takes about 15 minutes to get to the second stage. And while I'm waiting for those 15 minutes, I would do all my other checks, including the gas pressures for stage one and then later stage two, once it ramps up. And I actually did this for a while and everything was just fine. So I would take out the outlet plug on the gas valve while the furnace is running, hook up my manometer hose, hook up my manometer and just measure my gas pressures and adjust them if needed. But one day my luck ran out. I accidentally took out the inlet plug on the gas valve instead of the outlet plug. I was distracted or I got a call or something. I don't remember what happened, but somehow I accidentally took out that inlet plug, which is usually two times higher pressure than the outlet. And of course, I was working on a furnace that had open burners. It wasn't a sealed box. So right when I took out this plug, the inlet plug, while the furnace is running and the burners are on, Right when I take that thing out, the gas rushes out and immediately goes up and ignites. Before I even realized what happened, I have a flaming torch coming out of the gas valve and going into the burner box. And the whole furnace, the inside of it, it just looked like it was on fire. After my initial shock wore off, I panicked and quickly turned off the power to the furnace. But since this was the inlet plug, turning off power to the gas valve did not shut off the gas. So the gas kept coming out and the flame was still on. And to make matters worse, the gas shutoff valve, which is oftentimes right next to the furnace, right where the gas pipe comes out, this one happened to be behind the furnace and tucked in between the water heater and the furnace so it was hard to get to. By the time I tracked down that gas shutoff valve and turned it off, another five seconds passed. So by this time, the wires were melted and the inside of the furnace just looked crispy and black. I really wish I took a picture of that back then, but I guess I was under too much stress to even consider it. But finally, I got that flame to go off. I put that little plug back in. I put the furnace doors back on. I thanked the Lord that the homeowner was not with me because oftentimes the homeowner would be interested and they would watch the inspection and I was fine with that. And another thing I got lucky with is that the fire alarm did not start going off either. So anyways, I put out the fire. I take my bag, I go upstairs and I tell the homeowner, hey, I gotta make a phone call, but I'll be right back. So I go out to my van, I call up my senior technician and I tell him exactly what happened. Needless to say, he was rather speechless, but he did say that he was gonna come out there and take a look at what damage I caused. To be honest, this is the part where I chickened out and I asked that senior technician, hey, could you please let me go to my next job and you can just let me know what happened? because I'm really embarrassed. I really don't want to see that homeowner and tell him that I torched his furnace. The senior tech was gracious enough to let me go and he said he would deal with the aftermath himself. 
So later on, he did give me a call and he said he ended up having to replace the whole wiring harness. But other than that, all the stuff that looked black, he was able to just wipe it all down with a rag and you couldn't even tell that there was a fire. So I got really lucky that besides the melted wires, none of the other parts got damaged. So that's my blunder story. And by the way, as I was on my way to the next job, my adrenaline wore off and like for the next 20 minutes, my hands were just shaking. It turns out that for me, that was a rather scary experience after all. And if you're a new technician watching this, I just wanna encourage you to always take responsibility for your blunders and your mistakes. Don't sweep them under the rug, don't pretend like they didn't happen or run away from it. Make sure you own up to your mistake, take responsibility and get that fixed. And if you can't get it fixed, then do what I did, call out somebody else and ask for help. Because if you run away once, Chances are you're gonna run away the next time and the next time and eventually you're just gonna become a crappy tech. So own your mistakes and make sure you fix any chaos that you cause. That was my story and of course, like I said earlier, I would love to hear about your blunders in the comments below. And that's really all I had for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. And if you're still here and not in the comment section below, I got a little puzzle for you. The objective of this puzzle is to connect same color dots to each other without crossing lines. And to make it more interesting, can you do this in the next 30 seconds? Good luck, I wasn't able to do it.